Hey everyone, this is Bremster, um, and this is me coming to you recording a puzzle basically the night before I fly out to Brisbane. Now, I know you've seen a whole bunch of puzzles that have been recorded for the trip, um, but um, I did get some time um, on the night before I flown out, so I'm going to do some recording. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm taking advantage of the time I've got. There are more puzzles in the series to come. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to those when I can. And I was going through my queue and I saw this one, which is when you hear the rules, it made me laugh because the previous puzzle before I did, um, kicked into the series was the um, German Whisper Snake puzzle I couldn't solve. And while I was going through the queue, it's like, oh, there's a Fog of War puzzle. And it's a German Whisper Snake. And it was like, okay, um, cool. And apparent, I had the test of feed, looked at the test of feedback and it was like, yeah, give this one a try. So I'm going to. And if I fail, well, I've spent some time and then I'll come up with something. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to give this one a try. So this is Whispers, uh, Whispers in the Fog by J40. Um, so I, I'm not going to talk about what's happening on the channel. Um, I, I really have no updates because I'm about to go into a period of time where I really don't know what's going on. This is me taking an opportunity to record with almost no warning. So yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, there's been the Hamilton stuff. Uh, you will have seen some of that. There's more to come. I've already said this. Uh, problem stuff. Uh, there's stuff on the solo role-playing front, but I'll get to that when I can. Um, yeah, let's, uh, I think, yeah, it, let's look at this. So normal Sudoku rules apply. So in every box, in every row, and in every column, the digits one to nine must be placed without repetition. This is a fog of war puzzle, which is actually not mentioned in the rules. This um, grid was set by J40. I'm having to use his provided, um, his provided, um, uh, grid um, because I'm resetting a fog of war puzzle just doesn't work doesn't mention the fog at all anywhere in the rules that I can say um, which is a little bit weird so if you've not seen one of these before sorry it's not covered in the rules I'll fix that in the description um, and all of that but I cannot fix it in the puzzle rules not my puzzle grid but the way the fog of war works is um, a lot of the grid is covered by this fog um, and um, when you place a digit, any fog cells that are adjacent to the digit will be revealed and you'll be able to see the clues underneath um, or in those cells. But at the moment, the only cells that have been revealed are these ones. So we don't know anything about the rest of the grid. Now, what the rules do tell us is a single snake. There is one snake that moves orthogonally throughout the grid without branching or entering the same cell twice. So the snake will be an orthogonal snake it cannot branch and it will just be a path through the grid somehow, orthogonal path. It is marked as a green line, okay. Um, adjacent digits along the snake have a difference of five or more. So it is a German whisper snake. Um, and we know that this is one end of it. That's all we know. The inequality sign, um, or an inequality sign, I don't know if there's more than one, um, I, I said the because I can only see one of them, an inequality sign between two cells points towards the lower digit. So this digit will be higher than this digit, and cells separated by a black dot can, um, are in a one to two ratio. So somewhere in this grid, I don't know where, there will be um, black dots, or, or a black dot, or more than one, um, and they will be in a one to two ratio. It doesn't say anything about negative constraints in the rules. <laughs> the problem with fog of war puzzles, normally when I get puzzles like this, I will reset the rules to make them completely unambiguous. I, it's a fog of war puzzle. I cannot do that. So um, I'm assuming there'll be black dot or black dots somewhere through this puzzle. And uh, yeah, they just indicate that the digits have to be in a one to two ratio. So that's it. Um, that's what we know. I'm going to restart the puzzle to restart my timer. And let's give this a shot. And, you know, box eight is looking tempting. Um, so let's start there. Now, all I know is German whisper line stuff. It's a single snake that moves through the grid. So what comes out here is at some point going to have to move through this line. Five is in one of those. 
this can none of these can be four or six. So four and six are in these cells. This could be four or six. This can't. Because, okay, German whisper properties. You can never put a five on a German whisper line because five higher is 10 or more, five lower is zero or less. They always alternate high low because if you grab any low digit and make a five different number, then you jump to the high digit. You have to leapfrog the five and you hit the high digit. And if you start with a high digit, make a five different number and stay within the Sudoku digits, you jump to a low number. So you are always going to be alternating high low along a German whisper line. Four and six are very restricted because the only digit that is five away from four within one to nine is nine. And the only digit that is five away from six within one to nine is one. And then um, three and seven are also restricted, but not as much. Seven has one, two, three has eight, nine. And then they get the further away you get from five, the more open they get. But that's not that restrictive here. So what's the trick in this box? Orthogonally connected. This is the bishop's rule. So um, let's go and draw a line. So however I draw a path in this grid, I am making something up. Now this doesn't have a rule about touching, but it is orthogonal. However I draw a path in this grid, let's say it's that. Now it's Probably can't be. I've, pro I've probably broken the rules. Yeah, I've broken the rules of Sudoku here. But however I draw this line, if I draw highlight every second cell along this line, like this cell, 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 Every second cell along an orthogonally connected line, um, and drawing a very long line will demonstrate this a lot, you'll notice those cells are all on the same diagonals. And that's just the nature of an orthogonally connected line in a grid. Basically, because wherever I start, um, and I'm going to restart the grid and restart my timer when I do this, wherever I start, I'm going to do hop one, hop two, hop one, hop two. And that hop has taken me back onto a diagonal. And whenever I hop off the diagonal, back onto the diagonal, off the diagonal, back onto the diagonal, off the diagonal, back onto the diagonal. Because the diagonals, if I was to color them, um, and this is, I'll do this, I'm gonna restart again, and I'm gonna highlight the diagonals. This is demonstrating the Uh, this is slow, but I think it's going to be important for this puzzle. So if I highlight all of those in red, if I move off here, whichever step I take orthogonally, I'm moving back onto a red. And then if I move off, whichever step I take, or whichever step I take off this red, will then move back onto a gray. Off the gray, onto a red. Off the red, onto a gray. Off the gray, onto a red. Off the red, onto a gray. Off the gray, onto a red. And if... Because this line has to alternate high low, every I can figure out anything on the diagonals is either going to have to be high or low. So, for example, this and this cannot be the same polarity because there is no way I could draw an orthogonal line that would make this the um alt, this the same high low because however i drew the line i've got to go from red to gray to red to gray to red to gray to red this becomes gray i can't get it back onto gray if um if i was to go this way red gray 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 it's always going to be gray so this can't be red so on the diagonals they must always be the same high low so these cells here which are all on whisper lines and on the same diagonals, are the same high-low polarity. And if they were high, they'd be 6, 7, 8, 9, and what would that be? It'd be that it'd have to be 10 or higher, and it cannot work. So these are low, and these two are high. The inequality sign is there to give us the polarity of those digits. Now, one thing I can also do is I can say this line continues this way, this line continues this way, and this line continues this way. So these 
are 1, 2, 3, 4. This can't be 4 because both of those would have to be 9. This can't be 4 because both of those would have to be 9. So 4 is in one of those. Which means this has to be 9. If one of those is 4, that has no choice but to be 9. Which reveals more of the grid. So I don't need this line anymore, but I do need that. And this is going to continue that way. Now, this is a high digit. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to do... It's easy to be in the wrong mode for this. This is a high digit. And this has to be low because of the diagonal, the bishop's move issue. So this is low and this is high. So this is either six or eight. And I could have got that from this because this has to be three or four. Now, if this is six or eight, this is also three or four. No, what am I talking about? That is not true at all. If this is six, this is one. If this, this can't be four is what it is because this would need to be nine for this to be four. So this is actually the four, which means this is the three, this is the six. And that does make this the one because of the whisper rule. Um, I can undraw that line, draw a line in here, and this has to be a one because of the whisper rule. And of course, I shouldn't have drawn the line in because now that happens. Uh, this is gonna continue up and then that one. Now this is six, no, it can't be six because then both of these would have to be one. So this is seven or eight and this is three, so this is eight or nine. And this is a low digit, so it's one. Now it can't be one because this is low. So I'm not sure I actually want to color this. I'm gonna try and do this without the coloring because the coloring is going to interfere with the um with the the fog but this has to be low so it's two or four because it can't be one or three and this is seven eight or nine but this is also low so this is two or four this is high so it's six seven eight or nine it can't be six because this would have to be one and it can't be. So this is seven, eight, nine. This is low. So it's two or three only because it can't be one or four. And this is high. And it can't be six because if this was six, this line, well, these are the two ends of the line. So if... I can't have another end. This has to continue. So it can't be six so, because there's got to be another low digit connected to it. And if this, if this is seven, it'd be one, two. That could work. Oh, there's no one in either of these. These are two and three. So this has to continue and it can't be six because, so this is also seven, eight or nine. Okay. If this is four, I mean, it couldn't go down and it couldn't continue. It'd have to go up and then both of those would be nine. One of those is four, so one of those is nine. Hang on a minute. Here. How does this connect up? This can't end in this box. And it can't come back this way. 
So this has to come out here. Yeah, this can't end in the box. The end is here and here. So this line has to connect up somehow. So this has to come down. Because if this goes up, this is dead ending. So this has to come down. And it can't go right, so it comes down again. So this is now high, and is 6, 7, or 8. And it can't be 6. I've now got a 7, 8, 9 triple. This is low, so it's one, two, or three. Now the question is, does this connect up? And of course it does, because if this goes down again, this is a high digit, but I've got a six, a seven, eight, nine triple. So this would be a six, and whatever it connect, if it would, if it did this, these would both be ones. So this now connects up. That's cool. So what can I do with that? Well, this can't be 9. So this is not 4. This is 2. And that's confirmed what I found. But that 2 means this is 4. So this is 9 and this is 9. And I'm getting a whole heap of stuff. This line is, uh, yep, this line is going to go this way. This line is going to go this way. This line is going to go this way. Now, I can do some high-low coloring. This is going to be high, so it's six. It can't be six because this has to, can't stop here, and it would have to touch two cells. So this is seven, eight, nine. This is low, so it's two, three, four, and it can't be four because both of those would have to be nine. So this is two or three. This would be high, so it's seven, eight. This is not nine. This row is now all German whisper except that which is a five. So I can unmark that. This can no, no, this continues up. This is low, so it's one, two, or three, because there's already a four in the box. This is high. Can't be six, because both of those would be one, so this is seven or eight. This is low, so it's one, two, or three. This is low, so it's one, two, or three. There is a seven in one of those, so this cannot be a three because there must be a seven in one of those. This is one, two, three, four, five. This is a six. This is clever. Okay. Now, this is high, so it's 7 or 8, because it can't be 6 or 9. This is low, so it's 1 or 2, because it can't be 3 or 4. So where does stuff go from here? The weird thing is, all of these lines need to hook up. Nine is over here somewhere by Sudoku. Six is over here somewhere by Sudoku. I don't see why they can't both be two for this to be seven. This is not two because of that two. This could be eight, nine, seven, two. Yeah, that could still be three, I think. Six is in one of those two by Sudoku. Okay, so what's the snake trick that I've missed? There's a three in one of these by Sudoku, because that's a one, two, three triple. If that's a three, that's an eight. If that's a three, that's an eight.
I wish I'd put my aircon on. Um, hmm. This is high. So it's seven, eight, or nine, because again, it can't be six. This is low. So it's one, two, three. It can't be four because it would touch two cells within the same square. Actually, I can get this. This has to be high because of the diagonal rule. So this is six, seven, or eight. This one could be six, actually, and this is low. So it's one, two, three. Oh, this is not nine because of the nine looking down. So this is a seven, eight pair. This is a nine. That's been there for a while. Right, so one of these is a seven, which means that can't be a three or both of those would have to be eight. This is the two, this is the three. Uh, this is not a nine, but what I can do now is I can undraw that. This line goes up. So this is one, two, or three, giving me a one, two, three triple. And this line is doing that. There's a one, two, three triple here as well. Five is in one of those. Um, there's no nine here. So again, one of these is seven, so this can't be a three. If this was... If this was a three, one, yeah, this is a seven, eight pair. I can't put a three here because one of these has to be a seven. This is the one. There's no one here. I can undraw this. Sorry, I have some of dinner stuck in my teeth and it's really annoying. That's it. That just made it worse. Hopefully I can get through the video. Um, so this is one, whoops, wrong mode. There is a one up here somewhere. Two is not in those. This is a two, three pair. This is a two, three pair. One is in one of those. If this continued, this would be a seven or an eight, but I don't see a problem with that. Okay. Buckle up, Bremster. What are you missing? What are you missing? Like, is there a reason that can't be a six? Both of those would be one. That would be a one. Not seeing it. Every time I do that, it gets worse. Um, and it must be horrible on camera, so I shouldn't do it. Um, I've got to put four and five over here. That's not it. Three is in one of these, but I don't think that's it either. One is in one of those two by Sudoku. Because this is a quadruple. One, four, five, and six. Uh -huh.
It'll be a simple whisper deduction that I am just not seeing, won't it? Oh, this is tricky. Or I am blind, or both. I mean, the break-in was really cool. Have I marked every possible cell? I haven't marked this one. So this is one, three, or four. It's not four because that's not a nine. So it's one or three. Now, if this is three, this becomes eight. And where does this line go? It would have to go up again to make those two eight because I can't put nine in them. Can I do eight and eight? That would be seven. That would be seven. Be eight. I don't see why not. It feels like it's problematic for that to go up, but I can't prove it. And similarly, if this goes this way, it's seven, eight. If it goes up, it's six, seven, or eight. There's no rule about it needing to enter every box. Okay, so what does it do up here? If this goes up, it then goes across. So if it goes up, then either that cell or that cell is high. So I would have high here and then high here or here. Now, could these be six, seven, eight, nine? Well, that couldn't be, this would be six. These would be seven, eight, nine. Can't. This would be one, two, three. These would be four and five. Could it be those four? We'll put nine over here. Six would have to go here. And these... These would be, this would be seven, eight to go with that seven, eight. This would be five. Oh. Just checking this whole whisper line. Oh, right there. Three can't be next to seven. That's eight. That's seven. That's two. That's not seven. The two looks up, taking two out of both of those. This two makes this three, which makes that eight. This is seven, so this can't be the three anymore. This is the three, which makes this one. This three means this is the eight. Oh, that was really dumb. People would have been screaming at me for a long time about that one. This is not eight or nine. So this is six or seven. Seven is next to one or two. That is fine. This is not seven anymore. It's eight or nine. This line is actually doing that. And that's the complete line. This is not one. There's no one here. This is a high digit and it's seven or nine. But this eight is looking down, making this nine. So this is seven. So the entire line is now revealed. Seven means this is two. So this is one and this is two. I 
I've now got a whole box. This one looks over making this two. So this can't be six, it's seven. There's no seven here. Seven can't be next to three. This is one. One in box five can't be there or there. This is a one. This is a triple. One, two, three, four, five, and seven. Well, there's no seven in those. This is a seven. This is a triple. One, two, three, four, five, and nine. And there's no nine here. This eight looks over making this seven, which makes this eight and this seven. This could still be two or three. And weirdly enough, this could still be six. So what's this triple? One, two, three, four, five, six, and eight. This is now a triple. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. This is not six or seven. This is the five. There's no five in here. This is a six, seven pair. This seven makes this six and this seven. There's no six here. So six is in one of those two, which I think I had before, but I'm not sure. Six is now in one of those two because sixes are looking down here and that six is looking down there and that six is looking there, leaving just those. This two looks across making this three so this row, one, two, three, four, five, this is the six. This triple, maybe? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are one, four, and five. There's no one in that box. This is a four, five pair. This is the one. So this is a four, five, which means that's not a five. This is a six, eight pair. This is a nine. And I've got one, two, this is a three. Six, eight pair looks down, making that five. This is one, two, three, four, five, four, and eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this eight is telling me this is the four and this is the eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are five and six. And these are two, three, and four. I've done every clue in the grid. Well, every clue I can see. I have no idea if I'm going to get another one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So these are three, four, five. That's not three. So I've got a four, five pair. This becomes a three. I'm still not getting clues. Four, five pair here. There's a set seven. There are four sevens looking into this box. That's a seven. I do get another clue. This can't be one, two, it can't be two, four, it can't be three, six. This is four, eight, and this eight is giving me the order. Four and eight. This is not a four. This is not a four. This is a two, this is a four. Two in this box, it can't be in there or there, so this is a two. With the rules I've got, I now have every clue in the grid because there's no black dot in any of those and there's no inequality sign and there can't be a German whisper. So I've now got all of the clues revealed, which is a little bit terrifying. This four looks up making this five, this becomes nine, this becomes four. This five looks up, this becomes four, this becomes five, which makes this four, this five, and this four. Uh, what are these? Let's get rid of the center pencil marks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three, six, and eight. Well, there's no eight there or there, so this becomes the eight. This three makes this the six and this the three. It hasn't done anything down here, but this column just needs a pair. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and this five will give it to me. Six and five. The six looks over making this eight and six. This is a triple. One, two, three, four. 2, 8, and 9. 2 and 8 are here, so this is the 9. And this 8 makes this 2 and 8. I feel like I'm doing this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 goes in here, which looks down, making this 5 and 6, and I'm down to a single box. Mwah. I mean, this is a really, really cool puzzle, but I'm kind of happy with myself that I, I, 
I know I shouldn't be, but, you know, I'm kind of really proud that I pulled off a German Whisper Snake puzzle after the debacle that was the last one. The last puzzle was great. That's why I wanted to get Virtual on to do the collaborative solve. Three and five and one, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I finish with a nine, and that's the correct solution. Whispers in the Fog by J40. That was really, really cool. And as the last puzzle I do probably before I get on a plane, I'm not flying until tomorrow late afternoon. So I may do another puzzle tomorrow. Um, this is going to be, these are all being scheduled ages in advance. Cause when I get back, I'm going to have to catch up with a lot of work and stuff. Um, so who knows what's going to happen. Um, but I did want to do some other puzzles and that one was stunningly fun. Thank you, J40, for the puzzle. Um, thank you to the person who recommended it. You know who you are. Um, I try not to call that out um, um, because, yeah, I, I I don't want a lot of bad recommendations just to get things through. Um, things can get a bit weird on the internet. You may have noticed. Um, yeah, thanks to everyone for watching. Thanks to everyone who's contributed. I hope people like the new logo. Um, and yeah, there's some other news coming, but I it, 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 just quickly mention it. Um, YouTube won't dump this in cause I'm not big enough. Um, you need to be a big channel in order to be able to advertise merch, but I have, um, started setting up some merch with the new logo and I might start throwing some links in or something, but it's more for, um, my, my super fans. I, I'm not expecting anyone um, to go out and buy Bremster Puzzles merch, but there were some people who turned around um, who, you know, as setters and stuff and said, I'd love some puzzles with your new logo on it. So I set that up. Um, I will make that stuff available. Feel free to reach out to me in Bremster discussion or um, whatever, um, but I will provide links possibly below at some point. I'll, I'll figure that out. Um, but uh, yeah, if you are in any way penny pinching or anything, do not buy my merch. If you are ridiculously wealthy or very comfortable and you like the new logo, then it exists. I think it looks better on cups than it does on anything else. Um, I, I really like the coffee mugs. Um, thanks everyone for watching. Hope you're enjoying the series and the other content on the channel. The news about um, the open gaming license and the SRD coming under Creative Commons was just so good. Um, and I've gotten some other other stuff from one of the commenters on my D&D &D videos that's blown my mind which has been fantastic um, and um, recommended something and it's going to make my life a lot easier for the new system I'm going to run everything is just good for me in that regard I'm in the middle of a terrible time so yeah very very weird in my life thank you everyone for watching I've rambled enough good luck with yourself <laughs>